watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. Hmm. Hey fellas, welcome to part two and the final episode in Ming's 148 scale F35A build. In this exciting episode, I get some paint put on it. And uh, the kit went together, if you watched the last video, went together very well. Uh, relatively no issues other than the seam line on the wings. Uh, but I knew the challenging part was going to be to try to replicate the finish on the F-35. Now, some pictures, uh, and, and we'll, I'll show you some pictures on the iPad here in a minute, but uh, it's it's a rather difficult thing to try to duplicate the half glass finish, and some of them may not even have it. I don't, I don't really know. I'm not an expert on it. But um, it's really hard to duplicate that, that uh, gray, somewhat metallic-y finish on it, and um, I made an attempt at it. I've only tried to do it one other time, and that was years ago. And I know they have some half glass paints, but, you know, I just used what I had, which is Tamiya paints. I wasn't gonna go out and buy, a, a, you know, new paint for this. Um, so, I don't know. You can see what uh, see what I did and uh, see how it turned out, and it didn't quite achieve what I wanted. So, leave it at that. Um, masking the RAM panels or the, the tape on the outside, uh, was a pain in the butt. Now, I, when I set out to do this, uh, I was going to tackle it a different way than what I've seen other people do. A lot of people, you know, mask, uh, spray down the, uh, the main color and then they'll mask that, the, uh, the, the tape off and then they'll spray that the lighter color. And I decided to do it a different way which I thought would be a lot easier. Uh, and and there there is a mask set out there for like 15 bucks. I honestly think any way you decide to go, it's just, it's a pain in the butt. It, it is. Um, so uh, I think some of the new F35 paint jobs, they're painting everything the same color, which, you know, would be easier if you want to model something like that. But in my mind, the F35, at least, it has that distinct look with the, the different color um, tape around the, the zigzags and stuff. So, uh, otherwise, I mean, it's, it's pretty plain and boring looking plain. <laughs> so if you paint it just one color, it's even going to be wor uh, more boring. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, I am going to put this one for sale on eBay. So, um, I start my auctions off at a dollar. I'll put a link in the description. So no need to ask me if you, if you watch this, just click on the link in the description. Uh, I, who knows? Maybe maybe this might sell for a buck. I'm always I'm always waiting for that one model to sell for one dollar. I think I think that would be kind of funny actually. So, um, uh, let's get on with the video. And if you just want to see the finished model, I'll put a timestamp right here for you. All right, let's take a look at what I've got done. So I've I've got it in primer, and I went ahead and in choosing the paint colors. I think is. There's a lot of debate online on what colors to choose. Again, if you're building this kit, you do what you think looks right. So that's what I've done. I went ahead and mixed up a custom color. I wasn't quite sure that some people say use gunship gray and some other different FS numbers. But uh, I decided just to mix some F XF63 Tamiya with some uh, dark yellow and a little bit of white. And I came up with this like darker but yet um, warmer gray. And it is a little bit darker than what I probably want it on the plane. But that's going to allow me to lighten it up because I'm probably not going to do any pre-shading. So every, all my, all my shading is going to be done and my color modulation is going to be done post-shading. And uh, so I'll be able to mix this with some, some beiges and some whites to lighten this up and uh, make it look somewhat weathered. Now this isn't gonna be a weathered plane, but uh, I mean, I, I do want it to look like it's been in use, but I'm not gonna go, you know, uh, overboard because I don't think these are, these, are, these are pretty well maintained and taken care of, and I wanna keep it that way. Now for these lighter panels, or these uh, lighter zigzaggy areas where I think that's like tape that they put on there, um, I've used a custom mix of 36251, and it is, again, a, sort of a, a warmer gray, and it is fairly light. So if I don't like it, if, if it's a little too light in contrast to, to my main fuselage color, I can always come back over and, um, and tone it down with the, with the main fuselage color. 
Now, a lot of people uh, th that I've seen have a hard time masking this off. They make masks for it, custom cut masks, but uh, they're like 15 bucks, or they're really not that bad. But <laughs> I think this, the way that I'm gonna do it's a lot easier. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So obviously you've seen that I've sprayed the taped areas already with the uh, 36251, I've went ahead and sprayed those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask these off and then, sp then spray the uh, fuselage color. So I think this is gonna be a lot easier than spraying the fuselage color down, masking around all these taped areas like you see a lot of people do, and then spraying the lighter color. Uh, I think this way is gonna be much, much easier. Uh, before I get into that, I wanna show you the base. I got this finished the other day and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I've been wanting to do this torn flag with the We The People underneath it for a while. And uh, I just went ahead and tried it and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I think it's gonna look really cool with the, uh, with the, the, the blue and the red and the white contrasting between the, uh, the monotone grays of the actual plane. So uh, that is gonna be, I think, really cool. So there we go, there's my base. Now I'm gonna move some of this stuff away and I'm gonna show you how I mask, I'm gonna mask off these uh, zigzaggy taped areas. All right, since I've already got these uh, painted, we're just gonna, and you can see I've already started masking off some of these areas. So I'm gonna use some different things. I'm gonna use Tamiya tape, which is my favorite uh, masking tape. I've got the 18 millimeter, the 10 millimeter, and the six millimeter. And I've also got Tamiya sticker sheet that I'm gonna use as well. And if you've never used to me a sticker sheet, it's what I use to make all my stencils. You buy it in packs like this, you can get it on Amazon for like five, six dollars for a, a, a sheet of five of them. And they're, they come in really handy. So what happens is when I make my stencils, I have all these scraps left over that I keep just for instances like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of these uh, to me a sticker sheets for for masking off these panels, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. Let's see. Now, you can come along with tape like I've done here. This was just kind of a trial piece to see how well it was gonna work. And uh, I mask off all my windshields. I don't buy, I don't buy pre-cut masks for uh, like my canopies and stuff. I always do it this way. So I figured why not do it on the actual plane where I have all this raised detail so right now I'm just laying in my Tamiya sticker sheet and I'm gonna go along, I'm gonna try to get all my air bubbles out. I'm just gonna lay it over the section that I wanna do. And you can definitely see where you got air bubbles because it'll be a lighter color. I think I've shown this on a previous video where I masked off a BF-109 uh, windscreen to show you how I just remove these air bubbles. So I'm just trying to get these out, okay? Then I'm gonna take one of my long toothpicks and I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna burnish down the edges right up, right up against, right up against the, um, the raised detail. And this is gonna t tell me where to cut. So it is gonna take a while, but I think this is gonna take a lot less time than if I were to just come in here and use little pieces of tape and try to mask off the surrounding area, like you see a lot of people do. So I'm just coming in here and I'm getting real tight up against those raised areas. And so this is not only gonna burnish it down, but it gives me a good, good solid line in which I'm gonna cut. And this even works on these small areas because there's these small little zigzags back here and you can see I've already started doing these. And uh, it, and I can tell you from experience, this is going to save a ton of time. Uh, it is a little riskier in that if you make a mistake, you're going to cut into your, your plastic. 
but uh, after you've been doing this for a while, you, you kind of get the feeling, get the feel for how much pressure you need to put on your knife in order to uh, cut the tape and not cut into the plastic too much. Okay, so this should be enough just to show you. See, I've got an air bubble right there, but that's gonna be okay because I'm gonna be cutting that part out. All right, so I've got a real sharp X-Acto knife. And sometimes you have to uh, turn the plane to, to, uh, to see your, your lines. Uh, I guess just the way the light hits it. If I, if I try to cut this line like right here, I may not be able to see it, the line as well. But if I turn it just a little bit, the shadows are gonna allow me to see where my line is. I'm just gonna go along with just enough pressure to cut the tape and for these zigzag patterns what I like to do is cut all the diagonals one way and then come back And cut them the other way. And if you make mistakes, it's okay. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to maybe cut a little too far. But I think once you uh, throw all your paint down, it, it'll cover up I think any minor mistakes that you made as long as you're not pressing too hard now keep in mind if you if you're pressing too hard what's gonna happen is your your knife's gonna start tracking and you're gonna make more mistakes if you press harder let's see if I got these nice and clean so there we go and we'll come down here All right, so that's all there is to it. And then I can come back along with my toothpick and I can burnish these edges down a little bit more to make sure my edges are nice and down. And it kind of cleans up that, that uh, cut line. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think this is gonna save me a ton of time and uh, I'm gonna get on, um, Go ahead and masking all these areas off. Hopefully it'll take me maybe half the day rather than two days. And then we'll come back and I'll spray my darker color over top of this. Okay, fellas. <laughs> it's been a few days since I started painting this. And there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Masking this, I think, no matter how you do it, is just a real big pain in the butt. So I've got it all masked and painted. And uh, I'm not real happy with the color. And, um, but I can change that. And I, and I kind of anticipated this. So masking the bottom really, really sucked because you can see all the, all the, uh, the, the little lines and stuff that I had to mask, but uh, I got it done. So, um, I'm going to change the color a bit. And I also want to add some, um, uh, metallicness. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but we're going to add some metallicness to this. And uh, I guess it's called the Have Glass Paint, H-A-V-E-G-L-A-S-S. -S. 
And uh, I'm not real sure, but uh, some of the pictures I've looked at, it does look like it's got uh, like a metallic type finish. I assume it's some kind of a stealth coating. And I'm not real familiar with have glass, but um, that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Now, I've got some pictures pulled up here. Let me get my iPad out. Okay, we'll turn the lights off so we can get a better look. And so you can kind of, you can see the sheen, especially on, on some of these picks, the way the sunlight hits it, there's a little bit of a sheen. And it's kind of like on the F-22 Raptor. And the colors vary a little bit, and you can see the color just really doesn't look like it matches up too well. But I think I found a solution to that. Now here, it almost looks kind of purple. But like I say in a lot of my videos, uh, just depending on the lighting and, you know, the way the photograph was taken, <laughs> that's why I'm not real concerned about getting the paint just right. How some people say, well, it's got to be this color. Well, you know, it kind of, it changes and it's based on your perception. Um, like in this picture, it looks a little bit darker than in this picture. It looks a little bit uh, lighter. And this is the color that I really want to go for. So as you can see, it's really not there. But what I'm going to do is, and I've got some experiments here. Turn the lights back on. So I've painted up some experimental pieces. Okay. And I think I found the color that I want. So, I painted these up with the exact same colors that I've got on the uh, F35. But you can tell there's just a, a different shade. And this is a little bit closer to that last picture that we looked at. And how I'm going to do this is I've got some pretty much translucent metallic. Uh, it's called uh, Alclad High Shine Aluminum Plus. And there's a couple different Alclads I th that, that are pretty translucent. And what I mean by that is when you spray it, it takes a lot of coats to cover it. So I can gradually build this up to get the metallic finish that I want. And then I'll come back with some Tamiya XF20 medium gray, which is this dirty gray color. And that's going to give me what you see here. Now I've tried a different, I, I tried a couple different ways. Um, on this one, I sprayed the metallic down first, and then I overcoated it with the medium gray. On this one, I sprayed the medium gray down and got the color I wanted, and then I sprayed the, uh, the Alclad over top. And I think it's just a little bit too much. Wait, no, which one did I do? Yeah, yeah, this was the Alclad second. And then I just put a clear coat over top just to see, because when you put a, I put a clear coat over top and it does change it a little bit. So I'm going to go with uh, spraying the Alclad down first and I'll show you how I do that. And then I'm going to do the medium gray over top. So let's get on with that. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to paint this on these two pieces. I've got a little bit of a witness mark here on the inside of these. Oh, well, I'm just going to have to live with it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the wings turned out much better, but I didn't spend as much time on the uh, vertical stabilizer. So this Alclad stuff, you don't have to thin it. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't last very long in your color cup, though. It's, it's pretty thin and it sprays pretty quickly. And again, this is pretty translucent. So just throw a little bit in here. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to spray this consistently over the entire thing. Uh, I probably will spray it over the, over the entire thing, but I'm going to hit some areas and make a little, make some areas a little less translucent. just to break up the monotony because I'm not going to do a whole lot of weathering with this so any little thing that I can do to uh, to break it up I think will make it look a lot better so that's basically all there is to it so I'm just going to come in here and spray a little bit heavier here in the center almost like a modeling now, because my surface isn't exactly that smooth, because this is uh, to me a pain, and I didn't say I didn't wet sand it or anything, just because everything's so 
fragile with all the raised details. If I tried to wet sand this, I'm just going to be sanding off paint in certain areas. So this is all there is to it. And this is just going to add that little bit of a metallic finish to it. It's going to be hopefully be subtle. And right there you can see it. And it may not look that subtle on camera, but once I overspray it with this other stuff and then put a clear coat on it, it's really going to be subtle. So I think I'm good with those. Check it with the light. So basically, I just want it to when it hits the light in certain angles, you can kind of see that metallic finish. So I am done with that. I'm going to spray the rest of the plane and then uh, we'll take a look at it. Alrighty. So I've got my airbrush filled uh, about halfway with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, and I'm just going to put tiny bit of this in there so it's almost like a wash and my pipette's broke so I need a pipette so I'm just gonna mix this up now I want it really thin because I don't want to cover up all that uh, all that paintwork so you can see it's gonna be um, not like a wash, like a filter. So basically I'm putting a filter on it. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start changing that color to where I want it. And it's gonna take some of that metallic sheen away, but it's gonna leave some of those areas where I put it a little more opaque. So it does change the look of it. And then when I throw a clear coat on, it's going to change it some more. I'll set those two next to each other and you can see the difference. Just that little bit makes. Just come in here, apply my basic filter. And it's still going to leave that little bit of sheen underneath. So again, it's going to be subtle, but I think it's just going to add to it, to uh, the realism. Hopefully, maybe this might turn out to suck really bad. So, uh, who knows? I've never done it this way before. This is just my experimentation based on experiments, because I'm, I'm basically a model scientist. So, that's what that looks like, and I'm going to get on with spraying the rest of it, and then we'll come back and look at it. Oh. Here's what the uh, the plane looks like before I apply it to. You can see I've added a little bit more metallic paint right along the top, like right here, and in just a few different areas, just so it'll uh, kind of poke out a little bit more in those areas. So I'm gonna get on with painting this. I'll see you in a minute. So let's take a look at it. Now I've got it all painted. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far, but I am going to put a clear coat on it and then uh, just to protect the finish underneath before I put decals. Now, you don't have to put a clear a gloss coat on your model before you put decals on. That's, you know, one of those myths that uh, a lot of people buy into, but it's really not necessary. I do it all the time. But I do want to protect the finish underneath because I did spray a lot of thin coats and... Um, with using the, my, my decal setting solutions and stuff. I just wanna be cautious, and so I'm gonna clear coat it with some future, and, uh, and then I should be ready for decal. So that's what we got going on right now. I'm gonna get uh, clear in this, and then uh, get the decals on it, and uh, I may just do a, a little wash. I'm not sure how I'm gonna, uh, how much weathering I'm gonna do. I will probably do some oil work on it as well, so I'm not sure how much of that I'll show, but, um, Either way, we're going to get this done, hopefully this video, and if not, then uh, I may have just a final video by itself, but we'll just see how it goes. See you in a bit. All right, here it is, fellas. So let's take a look at it. And uh, I think it does look kind of cool on the base. Now, the metallic that I threw down, let's spin it around and see if we can see any difference in the sheen. It really, after all the, the clear coats and stuff, it really doesn't, there, there might be a little bit, I'm, 
I could probably could have went, you can see the, the sheen right here on this one. I probably could have went a little bit heavier on the, uh, the, the uh, high shine aluminum, to be honest with you. And that might have made a difference. Um, I don't know. I, I, if, if I do something like this again, I'll probably try maybe something a little different. So not quite exactly what I had wanted, wanted, uh, wanted it to look like, but overall, I think it looks, it looks okay. Not the, uh, not the worst, not the worst paint job I've ever done. So, uh, and again, masking off all those, all those, uh, those, uh, panels really, really sucked, sucked monkey balls. So there we go. And it pops off here just like so. Now I added a little, sometimes I have to add a little bit of tape on the end of my acrylic rod to uh, to let it grip a little bit more because if I didn't add that it would just turn real easily so with this tape on here I shove it in there and any way I position it it'll stay so that's why I have the little the little piece of tape on there um, the vertical stabilizers are magnetized so I've got two magnets there and then two magnets on the, the actual fuselage so they just plug in nice and easy, so I can ship it a little bit easier. And when the owner gets it, all he has to do is just uh, put them on there. So kind of a neat little thing. The uh, There's the bottom for you. And the inside, it was kind of a, it was a real pain in the butt to mask off that white area. But uh, I, I actually masked that off before I glued, uh, glued the fuselage halves together. That was the easiest way to do it. So it's pretty clean. And there is the, I really like how that turned out, the uh, the uh, the nail foil. I think that looks really cool. Somebody had mentioned uh, chameleon paints. And uh, I, I, I got online and looked at those. I'm not sure that it would give you the, the same result. and uh, But, uh, you know, it's something you might want to try, I guess. So there we go. Uh, the base, I showed you that earlier. I really like that. I'm going to have to do something like that again. And maybe next time... <clears throat> I'll uh, I'll write out the rest of rest of the uh, the Constitution there. There we go. So there it is. I am uh, like I said, it's it's a it's a it's a mixed bag. I'm I, I'm happy with the overall look of it, with with the plane and the base. I'm not entirely happy with the the paint finish, but uh, it's all a learning process, and that's what matters. So. Well, there we go, fellas. I hope you learned something from this video. And uh, again, if you're interested in buying this, I will have it for sale on eBay. So I'll flash up some pictures and catch you on the next video.